Talking about the boogie factor, let's move on to the video for Can Heat, mm. which, as far as I know, the concept is you dancing through a house looking for a, a party, and it's directed I by Yannis Like Ackerman. I normally am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always looking for a party. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm going from room to room, you know, I'm in my sort of bedroom. That's <laughs> quite a little like my bedroom. <laughs> they had this big Ferrari flag on the bedroom, I said, you can get rid of that for a start. Everybody knows I drive Ferrari, so get it. So um, I, I uh, yeah, I, I wake up and I hear music, you know, and, and I'm fusing through the walls, you know, and then going into rooms and people are, are in the rooms and I so can't really see me. And then there's a the part where I come out the telly, and so um, there's a little bit of post production to be done on it. And then it culminates in a, a, the biggest revolving room ever built, uh, which revolves. Um, you can imagine a room bigger than this, much bigger than this, mm. with all the furniture stuck to it, and it revolves around like this. Um, and I said, you know, for these videos, they, they, they tend to pick me out for these dangerous videos now, because they've, they've decided that just doing it with Celine Dion and stuff just won't work. You know, you can't, I just can't see Celine somehow leaping from chair to chair. <laughs> My heart will go on! <laughs> Leap. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, there was the, 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 the best part of it, I think, was that the whole room goes out, and the stunt coordinator, they wanted a stunt man to do it. I don't like stunt people doing my stuff, I'd rather do it myself. Because, uh, you know, I can do it. I mean, I've spent a lifetime of hanging off bridges and jumping across railway lines, so it doesn't bother me. And they've got these poles on the wall, so I decide that I'm going to go right round on these <laughs> poles the whole way. <laughs> and because of the nature of the video, you do have to actually, if you use your head, you can work out what they're seeing on the screen. And and um, and kind of visually make it very difficult to understand the sort of things that you couldn't actually do. So by me actually going up these two poles here, and the whole room goes round. So I'm now so disorientated because the brain's just not used to seeing chairs and the ceiling. And it goes so fast that you find you run up here and suddenly it's up there and you slide right the way back down and you can really hurt yourself. There's no two ways around. There's no, there was really one time I nearly impaled my balls. And I, <laughs> On a, on a side lamp, uh, on a bedroom side lamp, and nearly impaled them. So I went round and I hung on to this thing, and I got to the top, and I was like this, hanging on this thing, and I went, oh, I'll let go. So I let go, I held on my hands, so I suddenly realised, Christ, it's a 25 foot drop. <laughs> So I'm dangling like this, and of course there's two, two conflicting people. The stunt coordinator's going, stop the machine, bring him down. <laughs> and, then, and, and then the video to Janice is going, <laughs> it looks great, you know. So, so I'm going, don't worry, I'm all right. And, and of course they've stopped the machine. Those machines want to <laughs> take sort of like a minute to start up. So I'm dangling like this. Uh, I could see, I could see where, where I'm going to lose my nut, you know, and I'm just hanging on like this. But the effect was great because it had the effect of me hanging off the wall just with my legs out like that. Which is kind cool. of mad. Is that the reason why you worked with Jonas Ackland though? Because the guy, yeah, you know, I mean, it's, I mean, he's a brilliant video director. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, I didn't actually know he won the MTV stuff and all that crap. So, um, I didn't know he won that, and uh, that was a, a real bonus. Um, you know that he is that good, and and I think when it comes to the editing and post production and stuff, he is really the man. Uh, and it's very difficult doing videos, you know, because you, you know, two, three guys come along and they tell you everything you want to hear. Hey, isn't it yeah. great? And I'm going to make you look so good. But with Jonas, I think he realised how passionate I am about how it comes over and how I work it. And I insist on having a fairly close relationship with the director, you know, and it's not meaning, because at the end of the day, the way I see it is I'm the artist, yeah. you know, and with no artist there is no video. And that's just the way I look at being an artist. The same with record companies, it's the same with everything. I feel that artists should stick up for themselves, because it's a cutthroat business, and people can make you look really bloody stupid. So people don't like you, particularly, but they want the work, because remember, the money's going in their pocket. Uh, they can make you look silly, and, and I don't like that. So, Jonas immediately said to Sony, Sony said, well, will you do this video? He said, the only person I'm working with is Jimmy Cry, that is it. Good lad, you know, <laughs> you know, no one else will scrape their knees and hurt themselves and crack their head open like me. Oh, that I heard Black Capricorn Day, the thing that hit me straight away was the old Earth, Wind and Fire style horns. I was thinking, oh, oh yeah. Oh. That was interesting, because I was thinking it was more on the Macy and the Mets. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. No, that's, 
but yeah. you know that, that yeah, big sort of horn sound again yeah. and there's the elements of deeper underground there as well so tell yeah. us the story of black capricorn day it's rap funk <laughs> <laughs> yeah well what do we yes. want to do i mean Sly, kind of, it was kind, yeah, of, it's know, it's, kind of it was a percussive thing to start with actually wasn't it yeah, yeah. that's right it started off as a little yeah. Like, yeah a little thing on the machine up in the red room yeah a little percussion line. i had this little bass line and um added that to it added that to but it but it was left for ages wasn't it it was left for ages left well for i tell you why months. it was left because i'm a capricorn born on the 30th of december and it's the last year of the millennium, so I spend a day being 30, and then, you know, and then I sort of got the rest of my life after that. <laughs> so it kind of significant to me, and I've had some pretty black Capricorn <laughs> And, you know, Capricorns are known for their sort of dark, dark, deep depressions, that, and I'm really like that. I'm either high, high, mm. high, I'm low, low, low. And, um, yeah, um, the sound-wise, you know, it does relate to Godzilla in a sense. Mm. I mean, I did say to a lot of people, and they said, what's the next thing we're going to say? I said, well, I want, like, a rock, funk kind of thing, you know? There's a band called The Wild Magnolias from uh, Southern America, you know, in Louisiana, around there. We're very much on that kind of tip. And, it, and it's, you know, and it has a has a kind of, in a way, it has a sort of, sort of slime of Family Stone, uh, Hendrix-type elements mm. to it, you know? Lazy, funky feel. Lazy, funky feel, yeah. which I really like, you know? It's really my band my voice is cut out for that kind of stuff as yeah. well and i was very angry when i wrote the song as well <laughs> very angry when i sang it too <laughs> now that track everyone's talking about is supersonic because apparently liam howlett of the prodigy is going to remix this and when you listen to it hold the, on there is that sort of like prodigy. hold on hold on, <laughs> hold yes, on. Go on. There is this sort of like Prodigy Poison bass line, sort of like twangy effect in there. So yeah. is he going to remix it? Um, he probably will. I mean, to be fair with him, it's very influenced by stuff he's done, you know. Mm. I mean, I really like what he does. It's <laughs> wicked. But it also relates back to, you know, when I was 17, 18, and I stood in fields off my face as well. Um, and then that's what I wanted in it, you know. Um, put a vocal element in it, yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, sounds and stuff are differently. Yeah, yeah so I just think it's a lean bag, you know. I mean, we always share stories of our 190 mile an hour <laughs> road journey, so, you know, I think it's a natural... I'm still waiting for him to come over and have a look at the studio, you know, but um, I, I think I think it's great for us to collaborate on something, because he's the sort of guy I'd leave it to him, you know, just take it mm. and do something. But there are some people you're always a bit nervous about what's going on. Bit like the new canned heat remixes. <laughs> I was going to talk about those because. Uh, Thin wire. Yeah, well, is it another case of. You can talk about them all you like because <laughs> you ain't going to hear them. I'll tell you. But is it a case of the return of the Space Cowboy remixes and Morales stuff which you weren't happy with? No, I was. Uh, you know, I just, I just. I wish we had time to do it. We haven't got time. Mm, yeah. We haven't got time when you're doing this 11 till 7, 1 12 till 7 mm. every night. And, you know, and there were so many other things to do to get the Adam and July, and, and we've sent Toby on a mission to try and do one, but he did one I was sort of happy with, but I need to be there, you know, I, I mm. need to be there to see what's going on. Mm. Um, no, I just didn't feel the remixes that did the, did the song just, they were all right, but they didn't do the song enough justice, and I wanted something slamming. And in fact, mm. it mellowed out the whole tune, as opposed to making it heavier you know and i i don't know i always thought the idea of doing a club room is you make something heavier but yeah, hey that's yeah. just me <laughs> maybe i'm not, maybe i'm out of touch i suppose it's difficult to um to actually remix something that's already good uh, you know that's what i that's what i yeah. kind of felt when i heard it i was just like well the tracks are really good, what, good what, what on earth are you going to do to make it even better or what, yeah, what on earth are you going to do to it to make it even better and it just didn't seem to work Bite them! it just didn't <laughs> it didn't seem to work yeah. you know um <laughs> one of them was okay, I'm not going to mention any names, but one of them was all right. I, I personally would, might have used it. I just want something you know I mean? slamming though, you know? It just really but, annoys you know, me. If Jay wants something slamming and, and you know, they weren't slamming. You know, he's done a great thing, he's done a great video, slamming. and I just don't <coughs> want something that's lacklustre, you know? I mean, it's not, not <coughs> they were, but they were all right. It's just not quite what I'm looking for, and it's just like... Right. 